Maybe this is just like archive video um, for when we all make the transit to Mars and are commemorated on Earth. They the time capsule. Yeah, they did a Netflix special and they'll be talking about this and they'll use this particular clip because oh, no. how neat. How do we know that we would be on, you know, a Netflix special? Eight part docu-series. Um, as always, I'm joined by my friend from Down Under, Allison Tarr, the land down under, Canada. Uh, and the free range non GMO friend Chris. Definitely non GMO. <laughs> Definitely free range. I'm trying to think of all the other things that GMO could stand for that aren't really what it stands for. Weird though, Chris is bionic. So non GMO, but bionic. Not genetically modified, mechanically modified. <laughs> Got that like Luke Skywalker glove hand thing going on. <laughs> I just don't even know. Yeah, there it is. They they worked really hard on um, how realistic the fingers look, but the rest of the hand. So, hence the fingerless gloves. <laughs> the real the real reason behind our warmers. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Yeah, I'm aware of what's happening here. I just look dumb. It's all an illusion. <laughs> Illusions, Michael. <laughs> Great. So um, I guess I'm still like supposed to be doing intros. The way this podcast works is uh, Alex makes a topic and we talk about it for as long as Zoom will let us. And um, are we supposed to be? Are we all? Should we all do it in time? What's fun is you can visually see the latency. Then, like I bet on the recording, it's going to be really interesting to see. I can't do this. I'm just going to end wow. up making myself nauseous. <laughs> I have the problem now that I'm used to swaying with her. So I will not even be holding her. I'll be in a conversation and I'll be swaying as I'm holding a, a baby. Um, and, and it doesn't apply. Yes, ma'am. You want me to hold this puzzle piece? That's kind of an odd Pavlovian, like, like, some, like a muscle memory thing, yeah? It settles me down. So it's good for tense conversations, I guess. Although a little weird. Okay, so you're like self-soothing then. You're just like, <laughs> yeah, apparently. So, so when I uh, when I worked in call centers, I would pace while I was on the phone. Um, like I I couldn't sit still in at the cubicle. I had to get up and walk around. And so for years after that, when I was on when I whenever I took any kind of call, I had to, I had to pace. Even like other conversations that weren't uh, on the phone, I would yeah. I would yeah, was, people would think there wasn't I was, anything like, tense like, about it, and you yeah. were still. Oh, I can't do phone calls unless I'm I'm mobile. I have to wander around. That's so interesting. No sitting still. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so for team calls, like at work, that means I probably, like I definitely sit on the back porch. Thank you. I sit on the back porch. And um, I, uh, I, have, I have to have like other stuff to do. I can't just do the call. <laughs> so it doesn't project. split your focus though. Not really. I mean, if I need to be engaged, I am, and I'm gesturing with my hands and stuff. But then I, if it doesn't really apply, sometimes some of these calls, like it's a team call and, you know, it may affect, you know, two fifths of the team. And if it doesn't affect me, I'll, I'll work while I'm waiting until mm -hmm. it affects me or until I affect someone else. <laughs> I don't know. Meetings are hard. Like, I, I guess I do, I do have to stand. I find often that I'm setting my laptop on the table out back and standing for meetings and probably swaying unconsciously. <laughs> so today's topic is swaying. <laughs> swaying. Dungeons ah, and Dragons. I know this. <laughs> today's topic is Mondegreen. Mondegreen. Mm -hmm. huh. okay. So Mondegreen uh, is a uh, particular shade of green. Uh, it is named after uh, 
the mountains in France, uh, which have a particular uh, type of plant growth that from a distance uh, looks you know, in a particular range of, of, of green, um, especially during the summer. And so it is referred to as, as a, they, their name for it is Mondegreen. And so that is the name of the color is Mondegreen. It's, it's, a, it's named after these, the, this mountain range in France. Actually, Chris, will you spell it? And then Allison, will you spell it? So Chris, you spell it first. <laughs> M-O-N-D-I-G-R-E-E-N. Okay. And Allison, the correct spelling is? <laughs> um, it's almost identical. M-O-N-D-E. Yeah, I, I thought maybe. so. I thought maybe. Was. Yes, that is super not yeah. helpful to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> um. It is obviously a pitch used for playing um, non-ball related sports. Non-ball related sports. What are, what no, sports? You could play like you could do like ultimate frisbee. Oh. Um, on the Mondegreen. Or on the, on the Mondegreen, yeah. yeah. Or it's a park. Tee off on the Mondegreen. <laughs> That's a ball related sport. That's yeah, a ball related sport. Is that, is that golf ball. <laughs> Unless you're not playing with the golf ball, I guess. I'm trying to think of what other non-ball related sports there would be. Um, well, darts. Cornhole. Yeah. That's true. Oh, cornhole in the mountain green. That's a phrase if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Yikes. Um, um, yeah, I'm just like, even bocce, like even my most eclectic sports have a ball involved. Horseshoes. There you go. Horseshoes in the mountain green. Yeah, but don't Bring you your own, uh, don't you usually do horseshoes on like the, the desert flat? Yeah. Uh, we don't. <laughs> I guess that's true. You don't have desert flats in Florida, so so, so you're obviously up, you're not I, able to 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 play uh, horseshoes. Yeah, growing up when I um played horseshoes, there was like a pit at either end, sand around the stake. Um, so a lack of Mondegreen. Yeah. Although I've definitely played it on just grass with like a piece of rebar sticking out of the ground. That seems totally safe, doesn't it? <laughs> rebar? Yeah. Piece of rebar sticking like 18 inches out of the ground. Like that'll never be a problem. No. Right? Oh. And let's throw things. <laughs> this is a great idea. Yeah. Heavy chunks of metal. Yeah. 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 That, are, that are like nicked up from banging against this piece of rebar over and over again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I like sports, but I'm starting to second guess whether or not um, I am a fan of horseshoes. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other sports where you throw, like, what, is it javelin? Is that the one where you throw, like? Yeah, a javelin. A spear. Yeah. Is that still I in mean, the Olympics? Is that the Oh, thing? yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's both a solo event, and I think it's part of the decathlon, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, okay. Which, I don't know why the decathlon doesn't get any more, like, extra coverage. It's pretty amazing. Extra coverage. As far as I know, decathlon uh, is, like, 10 events. Uh-huh. That's insane. Like, you're not just good uh, enough at a single thing as an Olympian. I can do 10 things <laughs> at an Olympic level. What's your favorite Olympic event to watch? Mm, winter or summer? Either. Do you have a favorite over, like, winter versus summer? I feel like summer gets more play for people. Summer's longer, right? Mm-hmm. So there's that. I think I like winter better. Um... And I definitely like anything they do that involves them sliding down a hill. So like <laughs> luge or skeleton or bobsled or any of those other ones. Like that, I, love, I think that stuff's awesome. Mostly I because I like, want to do it. No, no, but like I like, they have like the weirdest camera angles and coverage for stuff like luge or bobsled where, because it's like in the tunnel and then, I don't know. Why the way they edit, not... Yeah, like it's just everything happens so fast. Some events you can really like big picture it and like emerge, but some some things are just so split second that you're like, and it's over, it's done. <laughs> or you're just like anticipating a fall or some sort of major spill. You can't really watch it per se. It's the opposite. But I love in the Summer Olympics the marathon because oh. it's just impressive. <laughs> I have run a single marathon in my life. I think that might be the only one I run in my life. <laughs> uh, and then there's like the people who do like ultra, like the ultra marathon. Like, I, I, I can't imagine 
Like, I just can't imagine like what it would take to get your body in a position to do that. I Having just, run my single marathon and, and like the, but the running part sucks because it's running. I mean, that's just part of it. Right. But it's really amazing. Like when you hit a certain distance, like then you've consumed like all the, like the free, like easy sugars that you have in your body. And it gets, it starts, then it starts to become hard. So it goes from like sucking to like sucking and being hard while sucking. Like, it's just like every movement feels really exhausting at that point. So I get—I mean, I guess I didn't eat enough. I'm I sure I didn't eat enough. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> yeah, uh, for, I, I ran with a friend, and he—he he started the morning. He had a baked potato. We left. He left with. So he—he he started by like just casually eating a baked potato while running twenty-six miles, <laughs> as you do. I feel like oh, that—that that doesn't sound like nothing about that sounds appealing to me oh yeah my time was terrible so <laughs> I well i would just be doing it to like complete not to like qualify for the boston marathon or anything <laughs> our um our agency director just ran boston whenever it was a few weeks back mm -hmm. um which blows my mind like in addition to like you know running the agency side of the biz like she just has time to train for marathons enough that she can qualify for Boston and put up like a darn good time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sitting there going like, you know, like, boy, my to-do list is pretty big. Like get the oil changed in the car and I'm, well, to I'm just like, for years. I just got that done. This week I'm like laundry is a struggle sometimes. <laughs> yes. Not, not training for a marathon. <laughs> I mean, it's like a lot of running. Like, you don't just, <laughs> no. it's not like you go out for like, oh, I'm going to go train for 30 minutes. You have to run for hours to get your body prepared. But I think that's the difference is that like, if people like legit enjoy it, then it's not just like, oh, a lot of running. Yeah. And I will say like the runner's high, I think is, um, I think you probably feel the runner's high like as you're dying. Like it's probably a real similar feeling, right? <laughs> like your body's well, just I've like, always, I've always letting runs. go. I've always theorized that the reason why we enjoy things like uh, enjoy intoxicating substances is, and also like if you, if you consume intoxicating substances to excess, they kill you. And the reason why we enjoy them is because they get to you basically on, like to a point where your body's like dealing with not dying. And just so I, I think that would, that, would that would follow with my theory is, is like you get to the point where your body thinks, okay, I'm dying now. And then it, it sends out a lot of happy, happy juices. Do you think that, um, like, people don't, like, try and suffocate themselves for fun? Never mind. That's a, that's, yes, they do. That's, that's a not thing. true. Never yeah. mind. You're not having this conversation. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Is there something else you'd like to make a claim that people don't do? Because I could probably say that they do. Um, another way that you could kill yourself. That I, we are, no, no, no. no <laughs> don't go down to the green. green. Well, horrible rabbit hole. <laughs> um, chemicals. I mean, like, there's all sorts of things we do for stupid reasons. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. evolution um, is a, a bizarre thing. <laughs> well, it got us this far. I mean, jumping off of a cliff doesn't sound like a good idea either. I just saw a commercial of a dude that was ba that was uh, last night. Uh, the the commercial was it's for it was from Valero Gas and one of the shots was a dude basically wearing a human uh, flying squirrel outfit and jumping off the edge of a cliff. You know, a flying squirrel, like it's got like webbed everything. Yeah. So he's ba imagine a human wearing something that it looks like that and jumping off of a cliff. Um, like wingsuits. Yeah. They're, like I, the death rate I'm going nice. to stick with the human flying squirrel, squirrel outfit. Yeah. The death rate in that hobby is very high, but people do that. They jump off of like mountains and like, navigate through gorges and gullies and whatnot um, oh no like down the, yeah she was frozen for a while yeah i noticed that apparently like her internet thawed and did, like spilled all over the floor um <laughs> it's a shame like what happens if she doesn't come back we'll never know what mod degree is <laughs> that would be bad that would be something um, so uh so funny not funny uh not even really interesting um, I started I like where you headed with this. 
Uh, on Monday, I, I started a D and D campaign with the kids and their friends. Um, Ooh, and, fun! Yeah, and the world that I've set it in is um, this sort of. I guess it's not that obscure, but it's obscure now because it's disappeared off the face of the D and D map uh, since for a long time. Um, but it was a world that was not like their main product line um, called Dark Sun. Um, okay. that I always really, really liked the idea of. And I had, a, I had the box set back in the day. And then I got rid of it, sadly. Um, like, I don't know why I did that. And now I'm cursing myself. But anyway, so, I, so there's still like a huge community of players who, who play and follow all the stuff of Dark Sun. And so there is a podcast. And so I've been listening to a podcast of these guys talk about Dark Sun for the last several days to so sort of like, re like to immerse me in the material since like the stuff that i've got is like stuff i've downloaded off the internet and like like newer revisions to things um and like there's just such a bulk of of like material there and these guys have played it for a really long time so like i'm kind of just trying to absorb information from them so like uh in contrast to our podcast i it is interesting that you know they actually kind of know what they're talking about. <laughs> like they, they know how to have like an interaction. So what do you, what do you usually do in this situation? And, and like, they have like a topic that they stick to and it's, it's just, it's fascinating to like, but, see like what a real podcast could be. Like. Well, wouldn't you get bored with that? I would. Probably. Yeah. I mean, they, I mean, like I, theirs is far less frequent. Theirs is like maybe once a month and they skip, you know, sometimes too. So Okay, that makes sense then. Yeah. I um, I could definitely like tell that that's just not my bag when I was doing my my talk in um, WordCamp Atlanta, like staying on topic. Yeah. No, well, just a topic in general. Um, <laughs> like, like I, I mean, it was it was fine, and it was fun that um, like I had this topic, like these ropes that I was going to stay within, um, and I did for the like thirty five minutes or whatever it was, um. But, but I, like afterwards I was thinking about like, it'd be kind of fun to talk about this part or this part. I do think I'm gonna keep that talk around though. Maybe give it a, try and give it a few more times if anybody will have me. Um, it was fun. It was fun. <sighs> hey, do you use Docker? Uh, let's, let's add some tech to this call. Sometimes, not usually, because usually what we're using uh, at human made is Chassis, which is based on Vagrant. Um, yeah, so. it's the, the Laravel, like Vagrant. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, there's back. Awesome. Oh, but, good. Because I was about to ask Chris like some very technical questions. So, <laughs> do you? So when I, you, I, you I had to... done, I had done a, a a Google search for Mondegreen in case you didn't come back. Oh no! <laughs> so you know the answer? No, I didn't look at it. I just have it open in a tab that I'm now going to close. <laughs> I didn't um, think about that aspect of it, where it's just like if I just disappear, like what happened? Oh, we did, or I did. Yeah. Like, we're never gonna know what it is. How will we find out? That would have been the real plot twist if I had brought something to the table that wasn't actually a thing that you could even Google. That would be pretty fascinating. And yeah. then I just disappear. <laughs> <laughs> plot twist. It would be like a long this. time. Like after two years, you're just like, well, here's the topic. Also, um, I'm moving where there's no internet. Good luck. Also <laughs> serves them right. Ha ha. <laughs> and we would be tormented until our death. Yeah. I was just uh, I was just sharing that I have started a and d campaign um, set in the world of Dark Sun, uh, which is this sort of like spin-off uh, setting that they ran in the 90s um, and have been listening to a Dark Sun themed podcast for the last several days. So like contrasting their podcast where they actually like have a topic and stick to it and know how to like ask each other questions. Uh, <laughs> as compared to our podcast, has it's been fascinating. It sounded like thinly veiled criticism, but <laughs> it's okay. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't give up our approach to podcasting in a second. I was going to say day chops. <laughs> <laughs> I, would not, I would not give up our approach. I think that this is far more entertaining for us anyway. Maybe not for the listener, but maybe for the listener too. I think there's, I think you're right in that I think the listeners, <laughs> myself included, are a, probably a niche group of people, but the people who do enjoy it probably really enjoy it. So I, if you're out there, please send us questions that you would like us to debate because we have a lack of them. 
<laughs> we have a, yeah, we have a lack of understanding of how to do this. But it works out so well in the long run for us, for us anyway. Right. I don't know. So Mondegreen. Mondegreen. Uh, I, I'm going with the color, the particular color yeah. of verdant green. I want Mond I want Mondegreen to be a color I can use in my CSS. <laughs> I think that you can, right? You oh, could. You I could, could try. I mean, you, could always, you could always make it a SAS uh, variable. That's true. Mondegreen. Okay. It would have to be a really nice green. I mean, Mond means like world, and green is just the color of, of the green that is in the world. Mm -hmm. Obviously. It's true. And it would be a, a better green than like, because badass is like a kind of a puke green. Or at least that's what I've heard people refer to as. But I have not yeah. tried to use badass ever. And for those of you listening, uh, badass is when you use the, the hex colors B A B A five five. And and that and I, because in, in CSS you can use hex codes, which are you know alpha numeric uh, codes to represent uh, colors. So I um that's what I we're that. Yeah. Uh, Forgot that. Uh, yes, hexadecimal. A thing that I learned in college. <laughs> then I feel like, so then I'm like, oh, and then we should explain what CSS is. <laughs> and no. then I'm like, oh no, no. We're too many acronyms. <laughs> Pretty much. All right. I'm on board with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have no other. I have no other theories for Mondegreen. How about you, Gary? No, I still think it's a playing field. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've, I think we're decided on on on, on what we believe uh, Mondegreen to be. So I think maybe we should just cut to the the, the grand reveal. Yeah. So Mondegreen is the mishearing or misinterpretation of a phrase. So like usually lyrics. Um, so, so like, no. only, so like only baloney. Yeah, yeah. Or, or um, the one that gets constantly referenced when I was looking it up was um, from Purple Haze. Excuse me, why I kiss this guy? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And then I, I, I can name any of those. <laughs> and it originally comes from um, there was a writer in the fifties who coined the term because she misheard um, a Scottish ballad as, as something different. And instead of, and laid him on the green, it was, and Lady Mondegreen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought that was really interesting because then I was redoing all the lyrics that I've misheard and re like realized like 10 years later that I'm like, oh, that's not the lyric at all. And like I've just been singing along in my own, in my own way. Yeah, there's a word for it. Mondegreen. That's cool. That's very cool. There's there's entire books of of Mondegreen. Mondegreens. Is it Mondegreens or is it Mondegreen plural? Um, it's a Mondegreen. So a. the mishearing is a Mondegreen. If that makes sense. Okay. So yeah. So you can create multiple Mondegreens. <laughs> I guess if you want to mishear entire songs. <laughs> and there was one from, um, I was remembering, which, oh, I was going to look up, but I think I forgot. Yeah. There was one, I, I don't know if you, do you remember the Ramona Quimby books by Beverly Cleary? <laughs> yeah, because I read Beverly Cleary. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I grew up reading these books about this little girl named Ramona and like she mishears, I, I'm pretty sure it's the national anthem at some point. And like, huh. that's Ronda Green. I think she, it's like, and the ramparts or there's something she mishears and then she basically takes it to school and somebody makes fun of her or something, but. Yeah. Hold on, we'll be right back. <laughs> oh no. That's the saddest face. <laughs> She didn't like my Ramona story at all. <laughs> uh, what other, what other thing? I know that, I know that the, the thing that I remember, because I used to mishear things all the time, and then my, then my, my dad and his, um, I want to say probably his girlfriends, but I don't know, uh, w would like tease me about the things I misheard. And, and 
uh, the song Only the Lonely uh, was uh, Only Baloney. <laughs> Um, but there are others too, and I'm I'm trying to remember them. There, I mean, there's many, many, many songs that I that were like that. But only Baloney is the one that I remember the most. Yeah. Only well, there's that Baloney. <laughs> that moment of of realization when you're just like, oh, it's that's not it at all. <laughs> I just I have that mental. It's just like it's not an adrenaline rush. It's just like the sinking realization. <laughs> the opposite of an adrenaline rush yeah. and all the adrenaline leaves your body <laughs> your heart's just like oh how many times have i sung this in front of people or sung along to it in front of someone mm -hmm. charlotte has this pillow she likes to go and like fling herself onto but she missed just like oh. planted yeah yeah so well that's a lesson is what that is <laughs> character builder <laughs> Like most of her body hit, but it didn't keep her face neck uh -huh. stable. So it was like it bounced. I'm like, oh, and she didn't make a noise right away, which is like when you know it hurts. Mm -hmm. Like they're still trying to like account process for process that the their sensation that they expected did not occur. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah, like the the they, something different happened. Yeah, when they start crying right away, you know it was like a fear thing. Like, oh, they're not hurt. But when there's that like break before they start crying, you're like, oh no. <laughs> oh no, this one hurt. <laughs> this, the pause before the storm. Yes. Yeah, I kind of heard and saw the thump. I'm like, oh dear. <laughs> Didn't mute quick enough. Thump. So uh, we have one question. It's an Allison question from the archives. Uh, I say, I will say again that we would like more user listener user listener questions. You can send them to us on the website binaryjazz.us or on the Twitters. Have we talked about, um, what's the Twitter alternative that's like? Uh, uh, Mastodon? Mastodon. I was close, Mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, uh, whatever, Diaspora. Diaspora. But that's, um, the, that's the Facebook alternative. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Should we have like a binary jazz instance of, never mind, I don't want to finish this time. No. What's the question? The question is, I think it's a good one, uh, and I might have actually been saving it for, for uh, a rainy day. Uh, is it rainy where you are? No, but... Is know. it rainy where you are, Allison? Yes. Excellent. Okay, it qualifies. Perfect. Go ahead. Um, what technology from a science... you can't use it. <laughs> what technology from a science fiction movie would you most, likely to, most like to have? Oh, wow. Wow, this is a great question. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I can tell you what immediately comes to mind for me that's nowhere practical is I want the hoverboard from Back to the Future. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, it's so big, like faster than light transport. No. Uh matter transport. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what it's gotta be faster than light. Like spacecraft travel that has to be it why would we want anything else i i've always i've always uh fantasized about and and actually um in in the student film i made uh in college um the story it was based on had this element where um you could get like neural implants um so like basically like you get like a hard drive installed in your head mm -hmm. um to like backup memory or like to store things like like you might not need to access right away but you can store the information in your 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 neural implant um and yeah. or like uh and then the, and then so um so that's that's always a thing that i've 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 wanted and like have said like you know with the day that they start selling neural implants i'm there um, right but think about this way like you've you've dealt with this we were just talking about um like like local dev environments right your your brain and your neural implant now are two like separate storage devices, right? So you have to determine like what takes precedent. And so as your memories in your brain like change as they do, and we remember things differently, like what takes precedent? Like which one is cache and which one is like default? Like mm -hmm. how do you see this to me? Like it's a I fascinating would... idea, but it scares the hell out of me because oh, I yeah. don't know that I want the neural implant to remember things exactly as they happened. 
versus like the way my brain skewed it and made it better over time. There's, uh, there, yeah, that's true. I guess banging, there, for example. There's, um, there was a story. So Wired ran a, um, ran a, like a science fiction uh, uh, issue uh, a couple years ago. Um, and there was a story in that uh, where in the story, everybody had essentially like implants in their eyeballs um, that stored like their entire life. Um, and then when they died, like their, 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 they basically had a black box of their whole life that was then like, like a legacy that, that was given to the family. So the family could go back and like see like all these memories of their relatives, um, which was another like fascinating and also terrifying idea. Um, Cause you also end up, since you have now like a black box of, of your entire, like everything that you see, you also have um, like all the bad shit and also like how you died and like just, uh, yeah. It, it's, any argument, any, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Wait, and like, no. complete, no. complete sidetrack, does this um, film that you made in college still exist? Like, do you still Ooh, have yes. it? It's, we need it's, on, it's on VHS. Um, and I've, I've wanted... Is that VHS.com? No, no, like VHS cassette. Um, <laughs> so I have nothing to play it on. Uh, it does, I have a VCR. You should mail it to me. I would love to see. <laughs> it, it does exist. Um, I, I have wanted, cloud. I've wanted to digitize it, um, so that I could actually make it into like a, a movie movie, um, like, like a, like a digital movie that I get, like, that could actually be watched again. Um, mm -hmm. I do, however, have, uh, a, a short film that I did with a friend of mine. Um, we were bored one night and we just decided to make an action movie. Uh, so it's called a guy in a hat kills another guy in the hat. And the irony of that title is that both guys kill each other at the end. Um, and it's basically just us and running no around. <laughs> so we start out with hats. We start out with hats. We end the film with no hats. Um, <laughs> uh, and it's basically just us running around um, our dorm with Nerf guns. Um, and then at the end, we end up with like fencing swords and kill each other with swords. How, uh, um, how did you, how did you, um, or what did you use for editing? Like, since this was film, what was the like desk that you were working on? I I used uh, Premiere. I had a um, okay. I had, at the time, I actually had a video capture. Card. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you said that. Um, at the time, I had a video capture card. Um, I was thinking about remembering everything I've ever seen. And yeah, no, I mean, I, it's I, like I drank like orange juice on an empty stomach. Kind I of. used no, th it was it was recorded analog. It was recorded on tape, and then it was converted to digital because it had a video capture card. And then I yeah. then outputted it back onto VHS because that was the medium which we could yeah. distribute things back in the nineties and so and early aughts. That <laughs> digitalization that was like a one to one, like real time, right? Yeah, like you had to play it and capture yeah. it, and then yeah. you could actually do your cutting and stuff. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Boy, the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> like two numbers for a date stamp for so a that year. one that one I actually do have a copy of it and and it's not uh enco it's like I should probably run it through an encoder to make the file smaller, but that's something that I actually is potentially shareable yeah that's potentially shareable interesting interesting um, <laughs> the other the other stuff I don't have any of the source material anymore i mean it it took up like an entire hard drive uh, all of like the the video files when I was editing. Um, and I didn't keep any of it because it took up an entire hard drive. Um, so I had all, I have all the original like video cassettes that that we used in the filming of the of the movie, and I have all those in storage somewhere. Um, and I have the actual final cut, um, but it's not. Yeah, it's it's on VHS. So I, I also I have always I have had plans for a long time to digitize it and also to digitize the original material because I thought of, I've considered like re-editing it, doing like a 25th or a 30th anniversary or something. That'd and be like, amazing, you're like the new director's cut. Yeah, yeah. Extended yeah. scene. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've definitely settled. I thought about a lot of other technologies. It's still faster than light travel. <laughs> you're still, <laughs> you're like, nope. <laughs> No I mean, like, even, like, you think about, like, back to tanks and, like, the medical advancements in Star Trek and that kind of stuff, like, it still is important for us as, like, would that be the, society. Would that be the yeah. type of, I mean, like, that's the type of technology, but would you want, like, Star Trek's representation of that? Like, their version of it? Which, 
like which That's a, which faster than light travel yeah which faster than oh, light travel man this is so hard <laughs> well i want to get get specific <laughs> well so i think star wars is probably the best implementation um because it seemed like they weren't as constrained by by distance right in star trek there's definitely situations where um like you still had a long way to go at faster than light or different factors. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Star Wars just kind of simplified it and was like, who knows where Dagobah is, but I can go from Tatooine to Dagobah. <laughs> you know? Like, we'll make it work. This is fine. Yeah, just warp and we're there. Like, that's it. Like, I don't know the distance. I'm sure that somebody does, but, but it, it definitely didn't have that factor. Um, right. But the flip is like, oh man, the universe is just so mind bogglingly big. Like, even if we get faster than light, is there a point where we go like, shit, this didn't help at all. <laughs> like, it's just so big. That's, that's, it, when you, that's, when you, that's when you start using um, uh, event horizon style uh, faster than light travel, where you actually have to travel through a wormhole. Mm -hmm. Or create yeah, a wormhole so. that, travel, that you travel through. I think so. I think that makes the most sense. I, I mean, it, and then like, unleash the, on the, fly the like this. Of, of wormholes. That's okay. It's a, it's a fair trade-off. Um, the, um, it's no case. It's a big, like the, 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 like we, we can't see the edge of, of the known galaxy because it's expanding faster than light. Right. So is it possible that we could create travel faster than light and actually travel past the edge of the galaxy? And if so, what the hell happens then? That's the thing that scares me. Like, whoops, we, we don't exist anymore or we exist <laughs> outside of everything. We, Out, whoops. we fell off the edge of the world. Whoops. Or, or maybe the gal yeah, maybe we're just like, you know, dumb observers of the galaxy going like, oh, it's flat, you know, but it's really just, you know, an orb and somewhere there's like some aliens going like those dumb ass earthlings, right? Like, and everything's flat. I, I, I mean, and there's theories that it's a bowl. Maybe it's like complete inverse of a bowl. Like it's a ball, not a bowl. Ah, wow. <laughs> this is a good question. I want it to be, I will be wrestling. Wait, with wait, 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 wait. I, I know what happens when you go off the edge of the map. You you go around to the other side, like in asteroids. Yes. You just, you just re enter going. on the other side. Yeah, you just go like through the whole. And if that's the case, then if you're. So you like. You're more than 50% off the center, edge, you go yeah. the other direction. Right. Yeah. Get, oh. just, just like, just like uh, when you're on the other. Like, like when I was flying from Sri Lanka. I don't know about I, that. I could have gone, I could have gone over the Pacific Ocean. I could have gone over the Atlantic Ocean. I actually got, did neither and went over the Arctic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just. Yeah, it's crazy when you see like flight paths and you figure like, how is that the fastest way? And they're like, oh, that's the most direct. It doesn't look very direct to me, but because we're so used to this, like north is up kind of concept but if you spin like a ball and you just connect two points like that's obviously the fastest the line between those and yeah yeah crap well we just solved the, the question of the universe i feel like we came to a good conclusion <laughs> 42 y'all the up. universe and everything yeah. north yeah. isn't up just uh go the quickest route and that's the problem with like space there is no up anymore that's how problem. do you how do you give direct like directions in relation to what in relation this is big and there's no thank you for listening to binary jazz if you like this episode you can subscribe to us on itunes or google play you can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on twitter at, at binary jazz don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on twitter and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of binary jazz Thank you.